Hello, Linear Algebra student. This video is for Chapter 1.7, Linear Independence. Uh, let me make, make this a little bigger. Um, so, Linear Independence is the properties of vectors and also a properties of uh, uh, ma columns of matrix. So, we talk about talk about what it is about. This is a term. So the term is a definition. So if I have some vector, I can classify them two way. I would say these sets of vectors are linear independent if the only way I can combine them equal to zero is if all the weights is zero. So the only way I can do uh, add them together by different linear combination is zero V1 plus zero V2 plus zero V3 plus zero zero VP equal to zero. That's the only way that they are linear independent. But if they if there are a way that is that I can use some, even if it is just one way, uh, some uh, constant that are not zero, and I combine them and I'd be able to get a zero. Say for example, one V1 plus two V2 plus blah, blah, blah. Oh, it turns out to be zero. Then this set is called linear dependence. So that's the classification. Anytime you have two sets, or you have one set, you can use this uh, criteria to classify them. Okay, it, And so this is as if you are solving an equation of uh, the homogeneous equation, if there is only one solution or many solution, right? And um, the book also say if the set uh, has all the vectors are linear dependent, then it's a linear dependence. If they are linear, if they, they, they are linear independent, then the independent set is really common sense. Now let's do two example. Uh, I have the first one have three vectors, so can I classify them as linear dependent or linear independent? So I would have to check to uh, solve this equation. So try oh, x1, 1, 1, 0, plus x2, 0, 2, 2. Just pretend that I, I'm going to find these weights. 3, 1, 1. See if we can find it. So it's equal to 0, 0, 0. Right. So this is solving a homogeneous equation. So it is as if you are yeah, trying to solve this equal to 0. And uh, you use augmented matrix. The augmented matrix is 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 3, 1, 1, um, and oh, 0, 0, 0. And when I do the reduced row echelon form, Um, I have it here. The answer would be, okay, I can just show it here. So it is my 311 is A, right? So I have it enter here. So you can see that it is x1 equal to 0, x2 equal to 0, x3 equal to 0, right? So the, the uh, is equivalent to an answer of 0. 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So it, the only non-trivial solution is that. So they must be independent. You have to have 0 to make the, the right-hand side 0. So independent. Independent means you cannot make it 0. They always have some number unless you put the coefficient to be 0. Now I have another set of three vectors. Uh, use the same two set one one zero zero two two, but the third one is three negative seven ten. So uh, are they independent? So I'm going to run the same thing, but I am going to do e right one one zero zero two two and uh, three negative seven ten. So I'm going to row actual form of e. It turns out to be the is equivalent to the augmented matrix of one zero three zero. So that would equal to um, equal to uh, one one zero zero two two three negative seven ten zero 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 augmented. Okay, and this uh, reduced actually form is one zero three one zero three zero one negative five. 0, 1, negative 5, 0, and then 0, 0, 0, 0. 
So you see how I have two private position, one non private column. So I have one free variable. So of course it's dependent. So how do I show the relationship? Where is the weights that would make them, you know, when, you know, what is one of those ways that can, that can do them. So this is showing the linear relationship between them. I would have to solve the, um, solution. So x3, uh, no, x1 <laughs> plus 3x3 equal to 0, x2 minus 5x3 equal to 0, and x3 is free, right? Because it's free, I'm just going to do um, x3 equal to 1. So instead of writing parametric or whatever, general solution, I because I just need to show a relationship. So I write x3 equal to 1. So x1 would equal to negative 3, and x2 would equal to 5, right? Because 5 minus 5 equal to 0. So that means I'm going to plug in th that x1, v1. So that means 1, uh, yeah, x1 is ne negative 3 times 1, 1, 0, plus 5 times x2, 5 times 0, 2, 2, plus my x3 vector, x3, right? Because this is actually x1, v1, plus x2, v2, plus x3, v3, equal to 0. So this is that's the solution. 3, negative 7, negative 10, and it is 1. That's x3, equal to 0. So there, this, this, this show that it is dependent because this is the definition. The definition say, if you can find some non-zero number and combine them equal to 0, that's it. Now, you don't have to ha use all of them. So the some, one of them can be 0, and it's still fine. Okay. So that is the definitions. You understand these two word, this word, linear independence and dependence. And the same apply for matrix because matrix and vectors equations are actually the same. So if we have a vector equation and this is equivalent to x1, v1, right? It is the same thing. So we say these are just um, X X N V N equal to zero. So these are just equivalent writing. So we can say the columns are independent. Only A, right? The columns are independent, linear independent. If uh, A X equal to zero has only the trivial solution. So example. So I have a matrix. Are they linear independent? So that means I'm just going to solve this, right? Solve one one negative two. 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative 3, 4, 4, negative 1, 3, times x1, x2, x3. So that's kind of like the weights. Is equal to 0. What's the solution? So augmented matrix, we learn uh, in 1.3 that to solve this, the augmented matrix is using all of them. 0, 1, 1, negative 1, negative, negative 1, negative 3, 4, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 0, 0, and use the calculator to figure out what it is. Um, I enter it in B, right? 1, 1, negative 2, 0, 1, 1, negative 3, negative 4, 4, negative 1, 3, 0, 0, 0. So I do a row echelon form of B, and you see that it's 1, 0, 0, 8, 0, 1, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, x0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 4, 0. Okay, so we have three, three perfect columns, one free variable, right? This is free, x4, because I have, oh, I actually calculate, I need to write something wrong here. It should not be x1, x2, x, it should be also x4, because I have four columns, right? So four four ways to be fine. So the answer would be what, according to this, so this is R, E, F. According to this, it is x1 um, plus 8x4 equal to 0, x2 plus 3x4 equal to 0, and x3 plus 8x4, no, plus 4x4 is equal to 0. So an x4 is free. To show the linear relationship, we just choose one. And so um, 
x1 will become negative 8. So negative 8, 1, 1, negative 2, minus 3. So this become negative 8. This become negative 3. This become negative 4. Minus 3 of the second vector plus negative 4. Well, actually minus 4, right? Of um, negative 1, negative 3, 4. Plus x4 itself which is 4, negative 1, 3, is equal to 0. There, I find this, this um, non-zero number, and they uh, when I combine them, they I'm supposed I, I can get a zero vector, so they are not linear independent. They are dependent. So the columns, the columns. Okay, so that's, um, you know, just showing you the definition. Now, um, let's uh, look at some quick way. So there is actually some way we can tell if vectors are independent or not. First, a vector, if a set only have one vector, it must be independent. So, of course, it have to be non-zero, okay? Non-zero. Okay, so why? Because if I have, say, for example, this facts, right? One vector. This is showing you, you don't have to do R or EF all the time. If I have a vector 1, 1, 2, and this is the only set, of course it's going to be 0 because how can you make it 0? So you have to multiply a 1, 1, 2 to make 0, 0, 0, right? So if you multiply any other thing, it's not going to be 0. So it must be independent. The only solution, the only, only solution is 0. If you can only have 0, then it is independent. So that is independent. You don't have any free variable, right? This is the private column, and there's no non, a free column. How about if you have two vectors? Um, if you have two vectors, they you can really easily check that they are independent or not by checking if they are multiples of each other, right? So um, if they are multiples of each other, you can say, uh, say for example, one is v1, the other is two v1. Then you can say negative 2v1 plus v2 is equal to 0, and this is non-trivial, right? This is not a trivial solution, so they are dependent. So anytime, so it is, you can just write out the equation to say if, if I have this, or if this could be c, right, not 2, but c. So you just say negative c of v1 plus v2, of course they are 0, right? So if you have Two vector, you can easily check independence by checking if they're multiple of each other. If they are multiple of each other, they must be um, dependent. And if they're not multiple of each other, then they must be dependent. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so like, yeah, I'm going to do example later. And then um, more more the more uh, easy way to look at it is uh, if you have a set they order v1 vp two or more vectors in a linear dependent if one of the vector is a linear combination of the others so based on that if i have one of them then these are then they are dependent so just so the proof is the proof is you have you know some set, you write them, and then somehow one of them is like v1 plus v2 plus blah, 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 v6, right? Doesn't have to be all of them. And so these sets, so if I have v1 to v6, but the last one, v7, is a linear combination of that, then it is really easy to find the solution. What is the solution would be if I add them? x1, x2, I add only these three, x6, and then the other one I add zero plus this V7, right? Well, minus this V7. Then it must be zero, right? Because, because this is a linear combination of the other. So one way to see linear dependent set is if you can check that one of them is a linear combination of the other, then they are dependent. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, so that this is a linear dependent set by inspection. So please do not do R or E F, just look at them. Obviously, 
this is the multiple of each this one, right? So I can show that uh, V three is two of V 